Hey, what's up? This is Silas. This is going to be an entry in my Peaceful Parenting series. The playlist is a hands up, don't hit, where I just discuss different things with peaceful parenting. In this one, I'm going to go through, um, this is a conversation I was having online with somebody and we were discussing the topic and my stance is there is no excuse to aggress against your child or anybody else's child. I mean, of course, your child to be the one where it's most important. And then people normally give different arguments and different excuses for why they should do it or why they can do it. Or in most cases, the unfortunate thing about it is they were abused as a child, they were hit as a child, they were spanked, or they say spanked when it's just hitting. It comes down to it, you are hitting that person. Um, they make excuses for it because in some cases, in their own personal life, they haven't really come to terms with what happened with that. Or with the people who did that to them, they might still be in their life and it's kind of difficult to confront some of these things. So if that's part of what's going on in your life, that's just a little warning with the topics that's going to be in this. I've had a tough time kind of coming to terms with what happened and what to do in the future with my potential children and how to advise other people in my life who may be hitting their kids or be around that kind of situation. So I'm just going to go into it. I'll give different quotes that they talked about and then give my response to those quotes. So the first one is, I was spanked and I turned out okay. So when somebody says that, there's no frame of reference to see how they would have turned out if they hadn't been spanked. So I'm not necessarily saying if you say this or if you think this way that you're not okay but since you don't have an alternate reality where you can compare and say, okay, this is the me that wasn't hit, and this is the me that was hit, so what are you comparing that okay stance to? You know, you can kind of say, like, look, the car that I'm driving, yes, it was in a massive accident, but it's okay. Now, in that case, you can possibly compare another vehicle that's the same, that might have the same miles, that may have been working in the same area that your vehicle is, and then you can say, okay, look, these two vehicles are both five years old. They've both been on the road for 50,000 miles, but mine had an accident when it was 4,500 miles or something, or 45,000 miles. It had an accident and it was put together. And then you compare those cars and you can say, okay, the stats are pretty much running the same. But now you don't know what's going to happen if it, a stressor occurs to that vehicle or there's a lot of things that can come in for you to say, okay, now in that situation, you could possibly say and compare, yes, this is a similar thing. But humans are a lot more complex than cars, so it's kind of tough for you to say, look, I am exactly the same. Even if you had siblings, even if you had twins, you don't have a frame of reference. Okay, the next one, it's not about hurting the child, it's about shocking the child. So, in this situation, I of course agree that adding shock to the hurt is not good. Let's say you're in a situation where you put the child in a dark room and then you randomly hit them. That would be worse than calmly, I mean at least attempting to calmly explain to the child why that person is about to be hit. You know, if a kid does something and then all of a sudden you just bah, hit them. But if you say, okay, look, you sit the kid down, you point them out and say, look, this is what you have done. Do you understand that now that you've done this, there's consequences to this action, and this consequence is going to be me hitting you? I would say yes, that second one is more positive. But you, if you already think that, yes, I can talk to this kid in this way, I can explain it to the kid in that way, then why do you need to add the hitting on top of that? Why don't you just stop at the explanation and that will be okay? Or you find other sources, other ways to converse and understand why this kid should do this. Now, if you cannot explain it to the kid, then the kid shouldn't be held accountable to the point of being hit for doing that action. Just in the same way, in general law, you would not hold somebody let's say you would not hold a car a vehicle accountable if it was left on a hill and was rolling down the hill the person didn't put the parking brake on that vehicle rolls down and hits you or hits your vehicle hits something of yours you don't hold the vehicle accountable because you can't reason the vehicle the vehicle was left it's just an inanimate object rolling down the hill whereas in that situation you would hold the person responsible who did leave the vehicle out of park so the next one is somebody said, everyone's seen this before, little four-year-old Billy trips and falls. He sits up, waits for five seconds, then starts crying. 
Small children cry when they're startled. The spank is equivalent to a nip on the ear to, to a dog to discourage unwanted behavior. So, first of all, I disagree with that, comp with that comparison. Just like I'm saying with the car, now we're going to the dog thing, that's also not, I think, a fair comparison. And also quite often in these situations, the child who's fallen down, if you kind of watch the kid from off somewhere where the kid can't see you, there's many times when the kid will just look around, see no one is seeing them, pick themselves up, and just get up and walk. So... I don't really understand what context the person brought it up in and I think it goes to show that the position itself that they had to go to a dog is inherently indefensible. It's somewhat kind of telling that they even went to a dog. You know, they have to dehumanize that character and you have a lot of situations where when a dog is being treated in a negative way, there's efforts made to humanize the character whereas you see it in the opposite situation here where somebody is like, okay, this is a human being for me to treat, to understand why I'm treating this human in this way I have to dehumanize them and put them towards to a dog so that goes back to the thing now even if the dog the kid is at the low cognitive abilities of a child when it's a situation of a dog nipping another dog in the ear those are two dogs acting the same in this situation even if you are dehumanizing the kid to the level of a dog you yourself are not a dog you yourself have higher capabilities ostensibly than a dog would to just go nip somebody in the ear. So no, that's not a good argument for that. And I think that one should be a non-starter, even just as you can see with the dehumanization that's going on in that situation. So <laughs> my nephew, I don't know if you can hear him in the back. <laughs> that's the thing, yeah, he will just occasionally yell out and you just have to find ways to converse with him. So this is another one. Once kids reach a certain age, revoking their privileges works better. And there's no reason to lay a finger on them. It's just about development and understanding of wants and needs. A four-year-old wouldn't care if you ground him for a week like a 14-year-old would. Now, here again, there are mere assertions. What defines that certain age? When is somebody three years and maybe 217 days and uh, 12 hours, and then when 12 hours and 31 minutes comes, all of a sudden that kid is now the cognitive ability to be able to be reasoned with whereas right before that you could hit the kid no hitting the kid is wrong at all times just don't do it so that development point when exactly would they come to place how would that child understand it and now when you get to the point where you're comparing a four-year-old to a 14 year old the effect of you're going to have on that 14 year old if you've been hitting them when they were a kid is an entirely different thing but that's probably something we're going to discuss in a different uh, video now with this person I asked them if they disagree with the non-aggression principle because this was in a philosophy group where I've learned a lot of these ideas from and in that philosophy group most people agree with the non-aggression principle which necessarily just means it's this non as it says non-aggression principle do not initiate force against somebody else self-defense is allowed protection is allowed if you see the child about to walk down some stairs yeah you can pick them up if you see them about to harm themselves put something maybe touch some fire you can grab that from them you can startle them maybe you're like hey stop that that's not initiation of aggression that's stopping them from doing something that could potentially hurt them now if it's a situation where you're punishing them for something they've done in the past how are you arguing that that's stopping them let's say somebody the kid hold touches that fire and hurts himself and you teach them okay you want to show like don't do this again hitting them again and saying don't hit that fire again that doesn't help anything I mean don't touch that fire again that doesn't help anything that pain there is an instructive thing by themselves by them doing that action but you adding that pain to them is not positive so as I said the following is not an argument but I used to say that I was spanked and turned out okay and the fact that I used to say that and also think I am going to spank my kids means that I was not necessarily okay. Now that was happening things in my childhood, both at home, and both in the schooling situations, in different ways, and those are things that I've taken it some time to go through and try to understand about myself. I've requested that people who were adults in my life at that time kind of inform me and talk to me about that, and I still have a process to go through that. But I think it's completely indefensible to have that mentality. If you have that mentality, if you hear somebody else saying something like that, I highly suggest that you stop and ask them and wonder why they're coming behind that. And I do understand my saying that probably did drive away certain people in my life who weren't hit, who didn't agree with that 
rightfully as they should have but i kind of wish that some people more people at that time would have stopped and said hey no that's kind of wrong that's not <laughs> that's not right but this is a topic that's tough for people to talk to talk about and um i hope to be doing a little more work on this and more and putting more effort into how exactly to bring the topic up and discuss it with people if you guys have any suggestions if you guys have heard similar arguments or you have similar or you have different ways to respond to certain arguments please leave comments in the in the below and also check out the other videos in the playlist and uh so yeah that was this video on uh, the hands up don't hit series and till next video like share and subscribe goodbye